And now, from 12 Studios, this is News 12 Now. Today is Tuesday, April 30th. Welcome to News 12 Now. I'm Kylie Dudman. New on 12 Now, a more Oklahoma teenager is dead after a crash in Garvin County yesterday. It happened just after 3 on I-35, about 3 miles west of Winniewood. Not many details released so far, but troopers say it involved a semi and a car. A 17-year-old girl who was a passenger in the vehicle was pronounced dead at the scene. The 18-year-old driver, Joshua Ramos, was flown to an Oklahoma City hospital, and the truck driver was not injured. The cause of the crash is under investigation. One man who killed another inmate in a Holdenville prison is sentenced to 22 years in federal prison. Prosecutors say in May of 2022, 35-year-old Kenneth Thomas Jr. stabbed another man after a fight over switching cells. Thomas was already serving an eight-year term for assaulting a Comanche County officer. Thomas will not be eligible for parole. And a reminder, tonight, Sherman ISD is holding a Bearcat Parents Academy. It's on parenting in a digital world. There will be a panel discussion on current technology trends and how to keep your child safe online. It's from 6 to 7 tonight at the Sherman High School Auditorium. And an alert for Collinsville drivers, E. Hughes at 377 is closed off due to a sinkhole at the intersection. You will not be able to turn on to E. Hughes from Highway 377 at the moment. Now, be careful when driving around this area and expect traffic. We will keep you updated with the story when it is resolved. Let's go to meteorologist Brian Briggs for our weather. Yeah, we are uh, seeing a warm and humid afternoon and quiet, though, for the most part here. Very similar to what we saw yesterday. And uh, that's great news, considering that we need as much quiet time as possible for the cleanup and recovery efforts after this weekend's tornadoes. At least the latest update to pass along on those is uh, Marietta. That one has been upgraded to an EF4. Ardmore still holding at an EF2. Sulphur still holding at an EF3. And Ada still not ranked yet. And these are still the only four tornadoes confirmed. We will definitely keep you updated as uh, more info becomes available. But that's kind of where we stand now. National Weather Service is still taking a look at a lot of the damage in the area. So uh, we're still going to get more information through the rest of this week. It is a warm and humid afternoon, say the least, though, kind of for April standards, upper 70s, lower 80s currently. And uh, it's quiet, though. Tonight begins the possibility of maybe a few isolated severe storms. And uh, but we have more thunderstorms on the way through the rest of the work week and into the weekend. So there's some good news and some bad news with them. We're going to break down your full forecast coming up here in just a little bit. Until then, back to you, Kylie. All right, thank you, Brian. Well, starting off our tornado coverage in Marietta, where the governor arrived this morning to assess the damage after the deadly EF4 tornado touched down a Saturday night. Take a look at these photos that you're going to see right here on your screen. Mercy Health Love County Hospital, which was in the line of destruction from that tornado. The hospital sent these photos showing the damage. Fortunately, 10 patients were transferred to other area hospitals before the tornado hit, and luckily, no one was injured. Not only was there damage to the patient's rooms, but also to the hospital's x-ray room. The hospital says it will be closed for the foreseeable future. Governor Kevin Stitt and FEMA are working together to help those uninsured first and small businesses. They say they are in communication with President Joe Biden to work to provide Oklahomans with what they need. Now, this weekend, they issued an emergency declaration. Stitt will head back to Sulphur next. He says the destruction there is the worst he's ever seen as it wiped out not only the downtown, but their sales tax revenue all in one night. Now to Sulphur, where an EF3 tornado slammed into the downtown business district. Just take a look at these photos right behind me. The deadly twister tracked east through a residential neighborhood. One person was killed, 30 others injured. First responders have closed off affected areas, but are allowing some residents back in to see their homes. Other people are urged to avoid the area while first responders clean up the roadways. Now to Ardmore. At least one tornado tore through the city there. News 12's Aaron Pillay spoke with residents who couldn't believe their eyes. The recovery process is underway in Ardmore after a tornado caused widespread damage. You don't think about it. You think about other people and you, and you pray for them, you worry about them, and 
then you experience it. The Ardmore Emergency Management Office has reported more than 10 homes completely destroyed and 20 others damaged. Several of these houses are in the Plainview Estates neighborhood. Where I am right now was once the second story of a home, but Saturday's EF2 tornado ripped off the roof and nearly leveled what was underneath. I looked back and through the lightning and the rain, I could see our roof in the front yard. Other homes in the neighborhood were also damaged. Uh, when we walked outside, it, we could just see it catastrophic and um, then it just kind of sunk in. Neighbors say the storm became tornadic quickly. The sirens blew and it's about 930, 945. And within about two minutes, we were in the safe room, and shortly thereafter, it had impact to the house. In this neighborhood, no one was hurt. We got to experience a lot of blessings. So we feel very, very blessed today. Citywide Ardmore OEM has reported about 20 injuries, but no fatalities. Residents directly impacted by the tornado can leave debris on their curbs for pickup. While there is a long road of recovery ahead, the Ardmore community is getting through it together. In Ardmore, Aaron Pillay, News 12. Oklahoma State Superintendent is also in Texoma today. Ryan Walters is visiting storm-affected schools in Ardmore, Plainview, and Marietta. Walters says he has directed the State Department of Education to implement a full-scale response and provide support to districts affected by the storms. State Education Department says a staff may also be deployed to help substitute in districts with teachers who need to handle personal losses. We'll have more on how the affected schools plan to finish out the school year tonight on News 12. And power is back on today for thousands who were left in the dark after the deadly tornadoes over the weekend. But there's still some without electricity today. In Murray County, about 290 households are still in outage. A little more than 300 in Carter County and just more than 100 in Love County. OGE says it's got crews working night and day to get power back online. Now, well, people from all over are coming together to help those affected by the storms. I was in Ardmore all morning long yesterday, seeing the damage, but also seeing the good the community is doing for each other. Take a look. Go right down there in front of the trash cans. What was a typical evening for Robert Stafford and Cheyenne Bradley soon became a memory they will never forget when an EF2 tornado tore through their town, damaging their home. Luckily for them, the only damage was water, wind, and loss of power, but they still needed help. Uh, seeing stuff like this, is, it's amazing. It uh, brings a smile on my face that people are actually willing to work this hard to come together like this. Along with Robert and Cheyenne, the Johnson family came to the Crystal Rock Cathedral Monday where Convoy of Hope and local volunteers are distributing food and emergency supplies to those affected in Saturday night storms. Just blessed, you know, very blessed and happy that they were able to able to come out and help everybody. You know, I'm still kind of shaking up about everything that happened. You, you hate these things happen, but probably one of the biggest joys would say uh, be between the actual helping the impacted individual and working alongside people that want to serve their community in this way. Convoy of Hope brought 30,000 pounds of emergency supplies to Ardmore Monday morning and two more trucks are still to be delivered. If you're in need of supplies or food, you can come out to Crystal Rock Cathedral again Tuesday morning to pick up necessary items. Reporting in Ardmore, Kylie Dudman, News 12. Now, if you want to help those impacted by the storms, the Red Cross set up two donation drop-off locations. You can take items to the Murray County Expo in Sulphur or the Love County Fairgrounds in Marietta. Items needed include water diapers, trash bags, and work gloves. But the Red Cross says financial donations are the best and quickest way to help. Shelters are also open for those needing a place to stay. They're at the First Baptist Church in Sulphur and the First Christ Church in Ardmore. Well, that's all for this afternoon's News 12 Now. Thanks for watching. And just know when you wake up tomorrow, let me do my best Justin Timberlake impression. It's gonna be May. Thank you for watching today's News 12 Now. Make sure to subscribe so you find out why Texoma turns to us. You can also follow us on Instagram and Facebook, where you'll see more social media exclusive content. Want more News 12 now? Watch us live every weekday through the KXII app on your phone or TV and through our website.